know your IS code provisions short lecture series. In today's short lecture, I will explain about actual earthquake forces experienced by structures. So while these actual earthquake forces are different, different from design earthquake forces, so this is because of the infrequent nature of uh, severe earthquakes. So let's go into the details and know what code says. So clause number 6.1.3, that is actual earthquake forces which are experienced by structures. So what code says is, <clears throat> Actual forces that appear on structures during earthquakes are much higher than the design forces specified in the standard. So why I like that? Why actual forces are more and why design forces are less? Main reason for that is the large earthquakes occur infrequently. So hence it is uneconomical to design for full force. So design life of structures, say 50 years, 60 years, 80 years, 90 years, or 100 years. So depending on how much we are designing for, generally structures are designed for 50 years design life. But if the uh, severe earthquakes or the large earthquakes which occur whose return period uh, is say maybe more than 100 years or around 200 years, then it will be definitely uneconomical to design uh, such kind of earthquake which will occur in the design life of the building. So what design philosophy our code is adopting? So but in design philosophy, there are three kinds of earthquakes which code uh, specifies that is minor shaking. So that is less than design basis earthquake. So what is the definition of design basis earthquake? Design basis earthquake means that is the maximum earthquake which can surely occur, which can surely occur at least once in the design life of the building. So that is uh, this DB, design basis earthquake. So if an earthquake which is less than design basis earthquake, uh, what code says is no damage should occur to structural elements and no damage should occur to non-structural elements. So that means structure should be completely safe. Then let's come to moderate shaking. So moderate shaking that is equal to design basis earthquake. So that means for which we are designing. So design basis earthquake, if it occurs, no damage should occur to structural elements and some damage to non-structural elements is uh, allowed. So non-structural, what are, are uh, non-structural elements, all the additions, appendages, all that kind of thing, services, the ACs, all that kind of things, non-structural elements. And then when severe shaking, when the structure is subjected to severe shaking, that is MCE, maximum credible earthquake, that means this is the highest earthquake which occurs in that region, in the region where the structure is present. So damage in, so definitely damage will occur to non-structural element and also damage will occur to structure also. Then structure should not collapse. That means structure should be able to take care of its self weight even after say severe damage to the structure, but it should not collapse. So this is a design philosophy adopted. Now in that case, so the forces which are <clears throat> there are occurring at uh, say severe uh, earthquake that is maximum credible earthquake and DBE. So structure is designed for DBE that is Z by two. So the design forces when we compare with maximum credible earthquake and design based earthquake that is the acceleration levels are reduced to half that. That's why the term Z by two is there. Now, so let's look at the structure. So let's uh, compute say VB, that is design base shape. So VB. So what is VB formula? VB is equal to acceleration coefficient multiplied by seismic weight. So what is acceleration coefficient? Here say Z by two. So Z by two indicate this is for design basis earthquake. SA by G, SA by G is the spectral acceleration. So uh, which, which we can read from the, uh, the figure, design spectrum uh, figure by putting uh, say a natural period of the building, R by I. Here R is the response reduction factor, I is the importance factor. So if you look at the uh, structure's response, 
VE is the elastic base shear. Elastic base shear. So when it comes elastic base shear, when we don't reduce the forces, that means when R is one, that is called elastic base shear. But our design forces are quite less. Why we are uh, going for less design forces? Because of the infrequent nature of such kind of earthquake, because of infrequent nature of such kind of earthquake. So how to get R? R is something like whatever is the design force. So V elastic by V design. So that gives R. So, but this, we cannot randomly select any R. For R, code prescribes what, depending on the structural, uh, that is lateral load resisting elements, we have to select that R. R value, response reduction factor. So code puts another condition that ductility arising, ductility arising from elastic material behavior with appropriate design and detailing and over strength resulting from the additional reserve strength in structures over and above the design strength are relied upon for the deficit in the actual and design lateral loads. That means there is a deficit between actual and the design lateral loads. So it is relied upon. So what are those things? One is say appropriate design and detailing, over strength, okay, over strength of the structure and also redundancy present in the structural system. So these three are relied upon for uh, reducing this uh, the, uh, elastic forces to design forces. So in other words, earthquake resistant design as per this standard relies on inelastic behavior of structure. So when we uh, push the structure laterally, yielding takes place at yield point. So generally this yield point, that is VY, yield point is higher than the design because of the presence of over strength in the material. And after that suddenly strength doesn't drop. Strength doesn't drop and it will go to the peak. But the initial tangent stiffness will not remain like that. It will bend. Bend means it is slightly reduced. So reduced stiffness will be there. So it goes up to the peak point. So that is V maximum. And further, if you push the structure at some point, it will uh, come to the breaking point or it will come to the uh, like load carrying capacity, uh, loss of load carrying capacity. So that is the V uh, like uh, the maximum displacement or delta max, which we can achieve. So let's look at that in this graph, you can see. So here, what it says is, yeah. so this is V yield and this is V maximum. So V yield, V maximum and then delta maximum. So it reaches up to that and then we stop here. So this is usually treated as say 85% of the peak uh, strength. So, but the maximum ductility that can be realized in structures is limited. So therefore structures shall be designed for at least minimum design lateral force specified in the standard. So there are two things, two ways in which we can understand. One is the base shear, that is VB. And the second one is uh, the minimum uh, lateral force for which the building should be designed. Okay, subjected to that VB is, say VB is less than this one, that is table number seven. It indicates some values which are uh, zone specific. So that is the minimum. So the VB is one thing that is a, uh, like equal, coming through equal and static analysis, that is one thing. And then through dynamic analysis. So VB, whatever VB is coming through equal and static analysis. So that is, the design, that is the design uh, base shear. If at all earthquake forces are more in dynamic analysis, those things should be considered. If it is not, then VB, which is coming from design, uh, this is equal static analysis should be considered. So the intention of this short lecture is to help uh, students and budding practicing units to understand IS code provisions in a better manner. Thank you.